Welcome. Hi, Fabian. So the one and only Stefania Lugato in my uh, studio over here, not too far because... Amazing studio, beautiful. You came uh, the long way, how long, like 23 minutes? <laughs> yes, 20 uh, minutes drive. <laughs> no, I'm very happy to have you because we know each other for seven years, almost yes. now. We have never done a podcast or an interview or anything. No. We've spent the craziest vacations together, yes. like you with your husband and uh, me and Nika, yes. traveling the world. But uh, yeah, finally we Building sat down. Building our dreams together. Of course. We both started from scratch. I remember you, you remember me. So we have a history together, I, yes. I remember when you explained me uh, the compensation plan <laughs> of your old company the first time. And I ran out and wanted to explain everybody. Everybody said, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? I still didn't know how to explain a compensation plan. Still today, I'm very simple the way I explain it. It's the part I let the man do. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I, mean, can, I can do it, but I don't like it the most. Yeah, but, but it turned out very well for you, I, yeah. I would say. So, yeah, seven years ago, uh, you were in the business for a year or so when, when I started. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it's crazy what happened in, in that short period of time, right? We both didn't expect it. Never. Never. Never in my life. <laughs> I mean, either. We, we, I think we both knew we wanted to change our lives with network marketing, but we didn't believe that it could become so big. At least I, I thought big, but not that big. Network marketing totally surprised me how limitless is this, is this uh, profession. I love it. For those who don't know about you yet, uh, yeah. even though, let, let me do it like short introduction. Yes, okay. So, so basically, um, you are not only a person who has built tremendous success all around the world. Uh, you were also, I think, like five times at the Most Powerful Women and GoPro events. Yes. In, I five think times? in total, maybe five, six times. Uh, yeah. I was sometimes in panels, sometimes as mm. a speaker. You yes. have around 250,000 followers on Instagram right now? Yeah, I think so. I have to check. All a little <laughs> more. 280. 280 yeah. and, so. and all organically, we have to say? like. Yes. Yeah. In the beginning, I have to say, I had somebody who did follow and unfollow, and then he was unfollowing all my, all my people. I mean, that doesn't work anymore. And then I was like, okay, 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 let's just build it organically and normal. Uh, I think part of it is um, because of our team, but also it's because I love fashion and I have lots of women that follow me because of the clothes and shoes. <laughs> Then you are um, the only woman in your company. So we try to avoid company yes, names uh, in, this, uh, in this podcast. So you're the only woman in your company holding the rank of a double diamond in all over Europe and the Middle East. Yes. Which is your main region. Your number one country every single year, every single month besides two months. <laughs> <laughs> in August. <laughs> It's Italy! I'm Italian and uh, I have to say most of the volume is coming from my team. Um, yes, we are keeping it up. Many people said, oh, it's going to be only one time, but we mm. keep on, on doing well. Yeah, I think Italians are perfect for network marketing. And before we get into yeah. your story, one last thing, because people always wonder, okay, so Fabi is interviewing six and seven figure earners. Okay. So, and... They're plenty. I mean, we just had that call with Eric yes. Worre where there were like 650, six and seven figure earners. I love that. And, and these are just the people who are connected to him and they're yeah. way more. Um, just completely openly, like, like what was your best check? Like with you or your husband and uh, like everything? Around $680,000 one month. But obviously there was, um, you know, every three months we get like a diamond pool. So it's not that like that every month, but it's more or less every every month half a million dollar. Yes. It, it, it's it's a bit crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it's crazy. Uh, specifically when you when you look back to to your story and uh, let's dive into it. Tell a little bit about how how you ended up doing network marketing. Like where did, where yeah. did you grow up? Who's Stefani? So I. I am 100% Italian. When I was 14 years old, I went to boarding school in Switzerland. And I think there I learned um, to, to think globally, to think internationally. You know, it was a school with a lot of children from all over the world. Never went back to live in Italy. I moved to London and to L.A., to New York. And, and I met my high school sweetheart at, in Switzerland. And we decided to get married and we had three kids. So for 12 years, I was just a mom of three boys. But then when love was over, uh, when I went through a very tough divorce, uh, I found myself with uh, no money. No money for me, no money for the boys. It's a long story. And, um, and you know, I was looking for jobs and opportunities. So I did work part time as a receptionist in a sp in a center where I used to do uh, where I used to do beauty treatments before and then I became a worker there. But obviously the money was not enough also because I was living in Portugal. 
And Portugal, you know, has so many people from Brazil trying to look for money that spoke much better Portuguese than me. So it was, was very tough. And for three months, I was invited to a network marketing event. And I said, no way I'm doing one of these things. Like, I truly believed that network marketing was a plan B for losers. I, I mean, I really mean it. I believed only the Americans make money, only the people on the top, that no one makes money, and it's a big scheme. Let, let me interrupt you uh, yeah. quickly um, because – so you grew basically up – can we say you grew up wealthy and in a yeah. good environment? Yeah, I would say – I would say for the norm yeah, – yeah, my school was the, the – was the second most expensive school in the mm. world. So it was quite a, an, yeah, an expensive <laughs> – yeah, lots of rich kids in my school, yes. But uh, then when you just said the laugh was over, actually the first time in your life you were with, without yeah. anything, right? And people says, but, you know, what about your ex-husband? He was working from La One. Didn't he have to give you money? Well, we were going through a situation in Portugal where he didn't have to. And my parents also, they are well off. But they were so upset at me because they didn't know the whole picture that for a while they didn't want to help me. I mean, they still gave me the one-bedroom apartment that had a beautiful sea view in Portugal, but it was one bedroom with three boys. So from, you know, having a really good lifestyle to turn myself, like what I was making in a month, I used to spend it in a pair of shoes before. It wasn't easy. It was, it was tough. But I cannot say that I was starving or that I was in the middle of the streets. I still had a cousin that helped me back from England. He He used to send me some money. My mom used to send me money. Yes, that my mom used to help me behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then when I started to do network marketing, the funny part was that they didn't want me to do it as well. So the family for a while was a little bit angry at me. <laughs> and, and I know the cool thing is I know your story, obviously, yeah. as we're close friends. Yes. So I will dig a little bit into the interesting part. Do that's fine. you want. No <laughs> secrets with me. So, yeah, that's true. Like you always speak your mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sometimes, yes. Bobby knows. sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Yes, it's true. <laughs> so you started network marketing. Uh, you thought it's a plan B for losers. But at the end, why did you start? Because you had no other chance or yeah. you've seen the opportunity? Yeah, I look in the mirror and I thought, what can you really do? You know, I did study. I, I'm a... I'm a graduate student I saw in, in L.A., but I, and I speak four languages, but all of them not perfectly. But uh, honestly, I looked in the mirror and said, what can you really do? What job can, could you really do? You had no, I had no skills. And so out of desperation, I go to an event, and I really go because I'm interested in the products. Uh, but then that night, someone really explained me what network marketing was all about. And it completely... Struck, struck me, you say in English? Stru uh, it stru it, it shocked me. me. It hit me? Yeah, yeah, it hit me that night. Two strangers talking English. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. But I, because I was like, oh my God, I've been doing network marketing all my life, but I never got paid for it because I love to share, even today, I love to share whatever I love. So shoes, lipstick, hairdresser, but I never got paid. And so I really, you know, I lift up my arms in the middle of the event and I said, but don't I have to go door to door and sell stuff? Don't I have to invest in a stock of products and they're like no 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 all you need to do is to try these products for yourself and then if you like them share them I'm like okay I'm gonna do that so you know with all over the world but the truth was that that night I went home and I couldn't sleep how excited I was and I remember looking at the ceiling thinking about like a constellation you know seeing that person I will tell that person and I will tell that person and next day I started to call my friends and everybody said no to me everybody called me crazy Classic. they said yeah they said poor you You, now that you lost everything, you lost your mind, you're nuts, the, what, you don't do these things. So after three days, I was already very um, negative again. And I thought, okay, this business is not for me. But as you said, because I had no way out, I didn't have better option. Thank God I kept on going. And, you know, also, you know, I, I love Jesus. I love the Lord. And, and for me, every time I prayed, I felt like a confirmation that I had to go on mm -hmm. and fight, even though everyone around me said, you're crazy. Uh, don't, don't, don't do it. Uh, you know, my family, my, my, my brother and father, they told me practically, if you speak to anyone that we know, we will tell them. And they did. Don't do this thing. And if you keep on going, we will not let you enter in our homes. That's how bad it got. But I'm stubborn, thank God. And um, I'm also competitive. So when I started to see people in my region having results, I'm like, oh, I can do it too. And I began to work. But my first year and a half, I was not successful at all. You even restarted, right? Yeah. yeah. I had to restart Let's, from Before zero. we go, uh, go in there, uh, one quick question. 
Would you say, is it true that you cannot say the right thing to the wrong person and the wrong thing to the right person? Because you mm-hmm. had an... You had a you were pretty biased for, yeah. for network marketing in the beginning, but was it because nobody ever explained it to you the correct way, or was it the right person explaining it to you that night? It was because when I was 12 years old, uh, our maid uh, came home one day and said, Madame, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to get a Mercedes Benz, and blah, 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 blah. And my mom bought her all these supplements and all these um, shakes. And we had them on top of our tables for years. No, years now, but probably months. Nobody used them. I was too young to use them. My mom is not somebody that really uses those things. And today she's still our maid. So uh, for me it was, oh, these mean people uh, lying to to the poor and the needy. People. And then, uh, you know, I also had this preconceived idea of networkers wanting to show what they weren't. So renting the car, right? And I know that some did it. I believe I was a fruit of badly trained uh, leaders that did not duplicate the right thing. And so I was surrounded by stories of people that didn't succeed. That's, that's and really. it's still around today, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we can we can name it. There's so many people in the industry, uh, like they they take fake it till you make it too serious. Yes, and uh, I hate that quote actually. Yeah, because uh, it's, it's completely not, mis yeah uh, misused. Uh, misused. I yeah. think if you in your mind, if you feel already that, like I remember one time I did an event and literally because it was a football night and in Portugal when there ever is there is football, the men stay at home to watch football, uh, soccer. In case you're American, but uh, yeah, soccer. And the women had to stay at home to take care of the man, you know, still very masculine, uh, macho mentality over there. And and I remember that nobody came to the event. No one was there. And I was just me and my partner. And we said, okay, let's just do it like if the room was full and let's make a full presentation. We already paid for the room. So that's for me a good way to say fake it until you make it in the sense that I was imagining one day to have full rooms and and which is so crazy. If I now look back at that moment and then think at Egypt, you were there as well. And we had a team event with 25,000 people. I mean, when I was imagining a big room, I was imagining 500, not 25,000. But still, like I said, network marketing surprises you so much. But um, but I that's for me a good way. But to rent a car and to you know buy fake clothes or fake watches to be somebody you are not. Why, uh, you know? Do you think people around you don't see it? So uh, no, I was I was always authentic and even on social media, guys, be authentic. That's the best thing you can do. And, and it's mostly short term. You yeah. Know? We just had again in in Germany. We had a huge article coming out, a uh, YouTube video. We had. The biggest German um, TV show talking bad about network marketing. Again. Why? Yeah, because it was one group um, doing some. I don't want to get into it, but saying like they're, they're selling something what has no no product attached to it. There's no value <laughs> chain, but only posting. Hey, you become rich. Everybody else is an idiot who doesn't do network marketing. <laughs> Uh, have those huge cars, but everybody knows after two to three years they're gone. But they yeah. give that bad reputation yes. still to our industry, totally. and, and it's not. I mean, totally. how many lives have you changed? Yeah, you know? or you? I have to say, guys, Fab. I, I know Fabi, like I said, for seven years, and he makes really good money really good money but he doesn't show it you're like the most humble guy you're always around in your surf trash <laughs> surfing and well, what is it what is it kite kite look and and that's what they they live i mean live i mean they have a beautiful home but still you you guys are proof of being humble you you actually show less than what you have i think it's more important to collect memories than collect things yes you know because I things totally things you cannot take with you anyways I totally agree. memories stay uh, always and Everybody has ups and downs in life. I mean, we, we've all been through it. Yes. Sometimes people ask me, uh, do you have to be broke to become successful in network <laughs> I know, marketing? <laughs> because so many of the successful people in network marketing reach the point to be completely broke. But I, I have stories of people that were already successful, successful, but they found in network marketing an, an extra income stream. And then when they saw that it was more fun, they saw they had more free time, they kind of gave up on their plan A to do plan B full time. But they didn't start out of desperate desperation like us I mean you were desperate Fabi <laughs> oh yeah, I was very desperate yeah <laughs> I still remember the Hello Kitty story at first the, one of the sec- second third time I saw Fabi around he was driving around the Hello Kitty car with Hello Kitty stickers yeah it was actually a huge patch from all the left from the steering wheel to the right and then <laughs> it was engraved on the back Hello Kitty when I turned it on it was bl- uh, like shining blue the whole car it was fun <laughs> was the last $600 I had, actually, when I came back from Spain. But it's not my story today. No. Today it's your story. Okay, yes. So um, 
let's uh, so I, I try to lead a little bit in the direction um, yeah. like like going through the story because today I want to talk a, a little bit about the things that people don't know about your story when they have heard you already okay and one thing I was I have literally me. it's not prepared I've no idea uh, what it's gonna <laughs> say <laughs> okay I, I, I was I was I was, I was laughing out loud because okay. you just said okay I worked in that spa yeah. Where I before was a client. Yeah. So before you went there just to do whatever, like a treatment. All the nails, time. Like my, my, my husband liked a lot of other girls. So I had to go to look good. I, I thought, oh, it's my cellulite. That's why he's unfaithful. So I had to, I went there all the time, nearly four times a week to do treatments, whatever, laser, peelings, massages, anything I could to, to get, to keep in shape. And, yes. and the owners became good friends of you? Yeah, the owners became super good friends of mine. And this is those were the people who then gave me a job when I was left with nothing. But, you know, I was working part time because I had to also be a mom in the afternoon when the kids came back from school. So they gave me the money they could and the, the money that was right for me to earn as a receptionist. But it was not enough for sure. <laughs> When, when I talk to them, uh, Philippe and Luciana, yes. so uh, shout out to, to the I two. I love you guys. <laughs> and uh, when, when I talk to them, um, Philippe, he was telling two stories, which really okay. got oh stuck my in my goodness. mind. Oh my goodness, go on. I told you, this is like uh, <laughs> all out here. So the one story is the famous uh, popcorn story. Oh my Would you, <laughs> would you like to tell it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I I stayed there during lunchtime as well. And uh, yeah, I love popcorns. And there were these popcorns with no butter. And I decided to make them in the microwave, not thinking that the whole spa was going to smell. Like the spa with essential oils and yeah, massage and, and therapy. I was smelling of popcorn for like two days. <laughs> and... Uh, there was the uh, the other story. Okay, that's hard to explain because um, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, so this was, was the one when you were actually brand new in the spa and you were mm -hmm. working there, mm -hmm. and um, somebody uh, came and asked, like, "Who is you? who are you?" Okay, and, and and you messed up the word, the Portuguese. Ah, word. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so but it's only really funny if you speak Portuguese. But so it's like this. Um, it put, Felipe was testing some uh, treatments uh, at the spa, and uh, in uh, Portuguese, when you are uh, like a test, like a piggy win, I don't, uh, know, I don't know the name, but yeah. you know, like you're a test. Winnie when, when you pig? When yeah, Winnie pig, called? something like that. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, uh, you guinea pig, guinea, guinea pig, pig, guinea pig, exactly. Guinea pig, it's yeah, a word, yeah. German and Italian doing the interview, <laughs> but that's the fun part. So, and uh, you know, you say. Um, one word, cobaya. But it's, you know, because uh, I read the Bible and in the Bible there are lo a lot of concubines. <laughs> Co <laughs> <laughs> so you have to understand the picture now. Luciana is pregnant, making the nails of a lady. And I walk in the spa and I'm like, oh my God, I'm back today because I'm going to be the concubine and of, you know, so the mistress of Felipe today. And I start to undress and I go in this <laughs> thing and I close it. All the ladies are looking, thinking, oh, this is a very open marriage. <laughs> Yeah, that was me. Uh, that was actually when I still had money, when that happened, because I was just a client. But already there, we were friends. But it, it's very important to point out one thing today, that this couple were one of my first big, big no's. Because when I started to do rental marketing, I was working for them, and I went to them, and I told them about the products, I told them about the vision. They're like, never, no, 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 we are not interested. And actually, Luciana said, ooh, if you, what else could you do? You know, you're not going to be a receptionist forever, so... Why don't you try? And today, instead, they are in full time. They sold the spa and they are actually this month running for a big rank. And they have changed their lives in so many ways. So, yeah, how life changes. But they only said yes to me three years later. They first waited like St. Thomas. You know, he waited to see. They waited to see if I was going to make it. and uh, But I did. <laughs> and so now they joined me. It, 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 it's super interesting how, how things change. And there's another story. Um, because there was one person uh, very dear to your heart, your, your dad. Yes. Who did everything he could do to stop, me. To stop you doing it. He even offered me money to stop. <laughs> he said, I'll pay you. 
<laughs> yeah, because you see, he sent me to study in the best boarding school. I studied abroad. And because of this reputation that network marketing has, uh, you know, if, you, if I go now to someone and introduce myself, hi, I'm a lawyer. Hi, I'm an accountant. You know, people feel proud. But in Italy, just now things are changing. But in Italy, networkers were not looked as something you want to be proud of. So for my dad to say, oh, my daughter is a network marketing professional would have been funny. So he's like, you look, you already lost your marriage. Your kids are young. Don't waste your time. So, yeah, what he did, he, I went up to one lady specifically that, again, today she's successful in my business, Anto Regine. But what happened is that he went up to, after I explained her everything and she was kind of convinced, he went b- behind my back. I only found out this years later and told her, don't do it. My, lost, my, my daughter lost her head, you know, with the marriage. She's lost. Please, I don't want you to get involved in those things. And now she complains to him and says, I wish I would have started earlier because she's a director in my in my team. But but yeah. these are all stories everybody can relate to it. You yes. know? And, and that's why I wanted to go into it because Deep. people see like the success. And yeah. my favorite picture is that ballet shoe when you have the, the foot. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen Yeah. So yeah. you have the foot of the ballet dancer yes. without a shoe and with the shoe. Yeah. And the shoe is what everybody says. Like yeah. it's the elegance, it's the, it's the success, it's the beauty, but they don't see the work you have to put in. All, yes. the, all the, the people see the glory, but they don't know the story. They don't know the struggles. Uh, another thing that people don't know about me was that I had three small kids and, and that, uh, you know, now we, it's so cool. We can work online and you you can make Zooms and you're reaching the world. But at the time we had Skype, we hardly use it, but we did a lot of offline uh, events. We worked a lot with events and events and meetings, meeting in restaurants, in bars. And, you know, sometimes I had to leave my kids behind or take them with me at the events, make them fall asleep. Uh, I have crazy stories. One time I went up north in Portugal. Someone told me, you know, these people that tell you, oh, uh, 30 people, I'm going to enroll 10 people. And then you get there and there was nobody. There was the husband and the wife and the cousin and nobody else. And, um, and I remember it was a weekend. I took the kids with me. And then we came back, and because I didn't have enough money to put petrol, the car stopped in the middle of the highway. It was rainy. The kids were hungry. It was late, and they were crying. I started to cry. When the kids saw me crying, they stopped crying because, you know, I, I, they, I tried for them not to see me cry. But it was very hard. I mean, really, Felipe, again, the, my friends from the spa, they had to come out with petrol and put it in my, in my car so for me to take the kids home, and next day they had school. So, you know, there were moments where I wanted to quit. There were moments where I felt like a bad mom, you know, they, they, they were not eating hot meals at night. Sometimes I gave them cereals or Nutella bread. The kids were happy, but I felt guilty as a mom not to cook a proper meal or not be able to buy them the food I wanted them to have because sometimes I spent the food money to go to that event or to buy that course to get, you know, to learn about network marketing, to buy that book. And, and so... There was a lot of struggle in the beginning. And I'm not going to lie, twice I was ready to quit. Uh, I just didn't quit and didn't start something else because I had no, no other big options. But uh, And I was always passionate about the product. So I was still going to do something just to keep the products free. To you know, I was mm-hmm. making enough to get my own consumption free with the commissions. But still, it was very hard because the youngest was four. And I know many moms can relate. But uh, what I can tell you is that when I understood that when I was more vulnerable, I was going to be with people and more real I was going to be, more people were going to love me and follow me. And I have to tell you this story. It's a true story. So I started to do every Monday a webinar. It was not Zoom at the time. We had GoWeb or something. It was uh, another app. And I was the one doing everything products, compensation plan, because nobody else could, could, uh, you know, could do it. I was me at the beginning. And, you know, many times there were like two, three people. Once there was again, nobody, and I'm like calling them up as I at least show up. I didn't know that there was an option that I could take away the way to see the people, but I'm terrible with technology. I'm like the worst. So like you could really see we were five, eight, you know, how inspiring. So, but uh, one night, I think we were like 12 people and I used to put my kids in the bath with very low water so that they wouldn't die in case you know they fall (laughs) but to play in the bath with toys because I had one bedroom apartment so they could go in the bathroom play with the toys and water and and I would do the webinar because otherwise they would interrupt me all the time so one uh, one night I'm doing the webinar talking I think it was the compensation plan so the hardest part for me and all of a sudden from the back I see coming wet and naked Luca 
<laughs> like all towards the camera. I'm like panicking. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to turn off the computer. What am I going to do? So like I, I'm so shocked and paralyzed because every, the whole world, not the whole world, but all these people, professionals. And I turn around like, look, at, what is it, baby? And it's like, I have to caca. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So like one second. And so I run and I go back and I ring him. And you will not believe it. Next time I had double the people. And the story became something like a trend in my team. And more moms got inspired. And today I do Zooms with thousands of women breastfeeding. Not that you see that, but you know that they are because of the cover. And you see the baby's head. And, and it's so incredible to be able to build a community like that of women that can work from home and actually can be an example to their kids. Mm. So. What was the worst thing ever happened on Zoom to you? Or, oh or my what goodness, you you, can I go or... into details? Is it, oh, you can is do whatever it? you want. <laughs> so one time I'm talking and I see this guy taking a shower. Now, you could only see the upper body. So he's taking a shower, taking a shower. And I'm thinking, and I could tell he did not know that you, there was a camera. <laughs> So all of a sudden, like, I'm talking and talking. I'm like, yeah, and by the way, there is someone taking a shower. Just, you know, be careful. What does he do? Because he's not thinking there is a camera. He probably thought because of the noise. He starts walking completely naked, close <laughs> shocked with the intimate part right on my Zoom. I'm like, ah! <laughs> and, you know, me, I wasn't the administrator, but I was on the phone and I didn't know how to turn it off. So big mess. Anyway, again, we had more vo more people checking next time. He was, a ho he was a hot guy. So some women were happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy times. I mean. Uh, yeah, you was, had as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We I had one lady going to a bathroom. I, I, I had a guy uh, <laughs> lying in the, uh, in, in the bathtub, actually, just uh, putting... <laughs> soap in his hair and <laughs> it's, 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 it's crazy but I, I was just thinking the thing is when you have so many people on Zooms yes. and everybody is seen if you don't do a webinar yes. there's always something crazy going on yes. and uh, what I always do now um, as obviously I have not so many ladies uh, as you have yeah. so I always say hey you can turn your camera off in case you're breastfeeding in case yeah. Uh, you're doing something intimate or whatever it is, but otherwise, please uh, turn the camera on. So at least they know then yes, that they're seen, yeah, like a I little know. bit up front. It's a new world. It's a new generation. Time, times have changed, specifically yes. since COVID. Yes, you know? totally. I mean, we, we made this huge run. Mm. You were a big part of it. Uh, it's crazy what COVID has done to our profession. Uh, so many people that always used to tell me, no, 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 don't. I will never do it. I have no time. It's not for me. They called me up saying, hey, I only don't, I only have money going out, no money coming in. Tell me about you. What are you doing? And yeah, and our business, we did what, four, plus 400%. Yeah. It's crazy. Four times the volume in, yeah. in, in, in three months. In three yeah. months. Wow. So, but uh, monthly, four times the monthly volume. Yeah. Then, uh, it, Fabi it was knows crazy. better than me the numbers. Yeah. Guys, I hate numbers. Everybody <laughs> knows. <laughs> so, I mean, before we go a little bit more yeah. into the today, so yeah. because I promised uh, that, yes. that we'll talk a little bit about uh, more about your story, what people mostly don't hear. Yeah. So before you were in your current company, um, you started with a different company. Yes. So, but you didn't start alone. So. No, I started with, uh, uh, so I was so skeptical about network marketing that uh, this girl, and I have to thank her, you know, if she will ever hear this this uh, this message, I have to thank her because she really convinced me to join her on her spot. Like, I, because I said, well, look, I will never do that. Like, I'm ashamed. I, I had my dad's mentality, which is funny. I used to complain about my dad, but I, I, I exactly fought like, like him, plan before losers. But I told her, you know what? I like the products. I'm going to share them, but I will not say I sell them. I will send them to you. But of course, I had a co-interest with her. And then after a while, as I started to do it, I fell in love with the profession. And then I started to be really her partner. In fact, we are still, there is still a video of us on stage uh, being recognized and talking. My first time on stage, oh my goodness, I was so scared. People think that, you know, they see you and I like, you know, rocking now stages. But I'm sure the first time you were also scared. Oh, I looked like Angela Merkel. I had my... Uh... <laughs> You know, my, my fingers in front of my <laughs> chest. So for those who want to know how I look, just Google Angela Merkel when she does a speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I was so scared. And, uh, you know, I thought no words would come out of me for like, the first two minutes. But then, like everything, as you do it, you learn and you get better. And today when I go, go on stage, maybe I have like, um, I'm not scared. I'm a little bit nervous, like the minute while they put the microphone. But I'm at the same time, I'm so excited. I want to go up there and, and give, my thoughts and help the people and also I'm so excited to get energy from the public that's why all these online expos 
are so much harder to talk only to screens uh, because you don't have that energy back uh, from well, wasn't the, that from a weird people. feeling now, now here in Dubai I mean oh, we, we just so had a big weird. one so weird and so for those who, who have never done that it, it, it's not even like a TV studio we basically had a full stage set up we had uh, an LED screen behind but then the camera is like 20 meters away yes <laughs> and the, the whole room was empty because of COVID yes and you're you're literally speaking into an empty room yes so there's no reaction you I don't know. hear anything you don't have a feedback It's terrible. Uh, uh, you don't know what's happening. And uh, uh, for me, for the way I am, I really had to pretend. In that case, fake it. Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> faking. I had a lot of people in front of me. Yeah. So you started together. Yes. And uh, you did it for one and a half years, correct? Yes. And uh, then something uh, happened. Then, yeah, then she asked me to leave, to quit, because she wanted to do full time with her husband. And, so the uh, husband has seen money's coming in, and then he wanted to yeah, be involved suddenly. Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, okay. yeah, because we were we were hitting the like the six eight thousand dollars a month, and and you know uh, for them, I mean for anyone it was a lot of money, uh, and uh, I'm I'm not gonna go now into all the details. But it was a painful mm -hmm. moment for me, but looking back was one of the biggest blessings because then I uh, re-enrolled, started from zero. Uh, with the now today husband, uh, we have different accounts. Actually, your sponsor, <laughs> the exactly. Fire, and uh, and even though at the time we we were not um, you know married, uh, still uh, if I look at now how, what a financial blessing that is. You know, my husband is making thirty percent on my check. That's not bad, <laughs> and I make full check. I would have had to share with her forever, but it was very hard because I I had to leave everyone I knew and emotionally. I had to wait for six months, so emotionally it was very hard. And but I believed so much in this profession and in the products that I really uh, decided to do it again. So, so basically, you started three times. If yeah. You, if you, so you started yeah. the first time you started together. Yeah. Then everybody you had enrolled until then, yeah. actually, you can count them as a negative. Yeah. So you started with uh, minus. Uh, how many I, I people? I could take uh, by by the agreement. I could take with me four Italians because she couldn't speak Italian, and they allowed me to. And Italy was closed, so they were not. A, but believe it or not, today they're all big shots in my team. <laughs> 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 but obviously, again, because I was there to help them, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not that they would have done something. With Without me, so, but yeah, but yeah, I had to start again, and then uh, I was, and then what happened? Uh, in um, I was doing very well in Monavi, as you know. I, I so, so far we don't mention company names. Oh, sorry, but, but it's all good. It's it's, all good. Uh, well, it's, it's anyway, it's bankrupt. <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> it doesn't done. exist anymore. Doesn't exist, so I can say it. It's an <laughs> old company, but I was doing well, yeah. um, and all of a sudden, I get this this phone call. Oh, you need to come to Munich, Germany, because uh, there is this other company buying us. And I'm like, what? What do they want? I was so angry. I was like, I love where I am now. Well, they, you know, me to be just of, after you've rebuilt it. Yes, uh, we have to and, and I was well. yeah, and I was like hitting twenty, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a month. And I think I was number one woman in Europe in that company as well in that moment. And 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 you know, I felt like a queen. Look, I was coming from zero. All of a sudden, I'm making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. I was super happy. And 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 when you are number one of that world, you don't think about that there are people making more money. I felt like I'm number one of that company. Company and I'm doing great in in that region. And um, when when they called and said that they were going to buy us and we had no way out, I said they are buying the company, but they're not buying me and my team. And I'm like, I really, you know, I'm a fighter and I get very upset. I'm very Italian, tragic and emotional. So I have oh, to yeah. say, yeah, <laughs> Fabi knows. Fabi has witnessed some of my craziness moments. And uh, and that was one of those. And I have to say, again, Daniel, the German, calmed me down, gave me some numbers, assured me, told me, wait and see. And I'm like, I'm sure I'm not gonna even going to like the products. I was very, because, you know, I love products and I love to build on the products. So for me, it was very important to love the products. So yeah, I rebuilt it again, uh, I, not from zero because I, my I have to say my team mostly followed me. I lost a few people in the move, but most of the people follow me. But I want to say I didn't change company; they changed like they yeah. forced me to change because I was happy. But you know what was so good about that change? On top of having a much bigger company opening more countries and all that, but it was because all of a sudden I was not the number one. 
I was one that I had to sit in the back because there were people making much more volume, more volume than me and much more successful than me. And it's like if I, in the other company, I reached the top of the mountain and I was happy and I was trying to drag with me more people on the top of the mountain. But when I arrived in the other company, I saw like if the clouds moved and I saw a much higher mountains to, to climb. And so together we climbed and I mean, the rest is history. It's been insane. And again, I became number one. <laughs> so again, it's not... You're competitive. Yeah, I'm competitive. I'm competitive. Very competitive. In fact, something that really helped me was when uh, I reached Daniel's Fire's rank as, uh, you know, at the time I think we were already married. I, I have to say, though, yeah. that you reached a rank before him even. Exactly. But so you became an Emerald Director when he was still a Ruby, Ruby. Director, which is one rank below. Yes. And, but then people started to say, oh, it's because of Daniel. You know, she's sleeping her way up. Ugh. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I need to show them th that it's me and I need to. So I really started to work even harder. And I, yeah, and then I reached Diamond and Daniel said, one year, Ruby. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I have to say, you know, like, I think it's important to show also how your why involves, evolves. Mm -hmm. Because I started for my children and because I was broke. But at that point of my life, it was not anymore about money, obviously. I already paid off my, all my debts, even in the first company. But I start, the, in that case, it was all about recognition and, and starting to get rid of that stigma, oh, Barbie girl, you know, because I'm short, even though if Barbie would be a human being, she would be 1 meter 80 and I'm only 154. But there's always this idea like blondie, you know, and I'm like, I need to show my dad, I need to show the world that it's not because of Daniel. I have to be grateful to him, to people like Eric Worre, to, to people like you, Fabi, to people around me. I'm not saying that I did it all on my own, but I wanted to be recognized for my own uh, skills and not somebody else. So that pushed me. But then also that fades, fades away quite quickly. And today is really about uh, impacting, changing lives, having a purpose, uh, giving you know, uh, just last night we were able to do a big offering again, and 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 I just love it. Oh, we we, we can speak it. We gave uh, thirty thousand dollars to to a charity. What yeah. uh, my wife Veronica is running. Yeah, but last and, night uh, we actually gave out a hundred thousand dollars. In total. To in, in total. total yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and 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 I look. I'm gonna just talk about this because mm -hmm. everybody knows about the hundred thousand dollars. But like we I we give that nobody will ever know because I always say you know don't let your left hand know what your right hand says. But again, is isn't it amazing that in network marketing you can become a, such a blessing because you are blessed? And so you can give money to places where you can really help practically. But also I know that by by making this podcast, by making, you know, my five Zooms tonight, tonight I have five or six Zooms, I'm going to finish at 1 a.m. But by making all of this, I am helping other people achieve their dreams and their freedom, not only financially, but also as a person. Because network marketing is all about self-development as well. I, I, you know, I started with few people that were that are wealthy already. So their why was never money. Their why was feeling um, worth it, feeling um, that they were needed, part, you know, wanting to be part of a community, having a reason to leave their home and do their hair and makeup. And and uh, I have this crazy story. I don't talk about it very much. I don't want anybody to understand who it is because it's a secret. So I'm going to be very vague. But um, one night I'm driving from one event to home. Oh, sh I was already too, too specific. Well, it could be anywhere home. <laughs> it could be anywhere. And I was driving back home with her and, and I said, oh my goodness, I'm so grateful how much, um, you know, this business has changed my life. And, and she says, oh, to me too. And then, you know, I turn around and I'm like, yeah, okay, but come on, you were wealthy before. You're not making that mon much money. Like I have a much bigger rank with, with her. And then she all of a sudden stops the car and parks the car in the sideway of the, of the highway and starts crying. I'm like, what happened? What's going on? What did I do? What did I say? And she starts telling me that the week before I called her to invite her to be part of my team, 
she actually tried to commit suicide. And not because things were running bad. It was, you know, she, you know she get great kids, great husband, just depression, depression. She wasn't feeling worth it anymore. She wasn't feeling good anymore. And uh, and she said that network marketing changed completely her life. And I mean, if I look at her today, she's still in my team rocking and, and she's a whole different person. I cannot imagine that just a few years ago, uh, she was gonna, she, I mean, she didn't do it because she didn't have the guts, but she tried and then she stopped. But still, isn't it amazing? What network marketing can do, it's crazy. It's, it, what people mostly underestimate is what it gives us beside the money. Yeah. You know, like the community, the friendship. Yeah, um, traveling. The, the travel, yeah, relationships. And honestly, so you know my story. When I started, I didn't know anyone when I came yeah. back uh, from Spain to Germany and I had to start from scratch. So basically, all my friends I met through the industry. Yeah. And the friendships I have nowadays, they're much stronger than any friendships I had before. Mm -hmm. Yes, um. it's 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 amazing how many great people I know today, uh, thanks to network marketing. And even though I do have a few friends from before, it's and I love to be with them. But we talk about the past. But if we start talking about the present, we have so different mindsets. And uh, and and again, I don't want to judge them. It's just that network marketing shows you the way in such a different way that sometimes I'm afraid to speak out my mind with non-networker people because I sound crazy. I sound weird. Uh, and it, it's, it's even with business owners. Yeah. So I have I have a good friend. He's a very successful business owner and but he does everything by himself. And and one picture would really showed me what kind of a great industry we're having. So he is in Vietnam with one of his producers. He produces uh, sport yeah. sportwear, sport gear. And he sends that picture from some rooftop bar. And he says, oh, it's so nice here in Vietnam. And he's by himself. Like all by himself in Vietnam, meeting so that producer sad. for one week. You and every me, single the line. Exactly. people. Yeah. Like, I can't stay alone, okay? I can't stay. I love to be with people. That's why I love network marketing so much. I'm like the last one. We are the last ones to leave the parties. We are the last ones to, to leave the holiday. We always book a day more. True. Because yeah. we, we love the community. I, I enjoy. People give me energy. Uh, Daniel is the opposite. <laughs> True. People take away energy, but that's why he has us. Yeah. You know, he has you uh, to help him with Unity Global relationship. And, 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 and that's the next thing. So everybody has a place in our industry. Yes. So it doesn't matter if you're into word, if you're extra word, yes. if you're more with data, facts, and numbers, yes. or you like socializing. Yes. There's space for everybody, right? I know. It's true. This is also very important because you and me are more... You know, dolphins and and whales. Like uh, we we like. I don't know if you know the animals. You taught me the animals, actually. Yeah, the, I didn't uh, talk uh, in the podcast yet because it's the first episode. Okay, okay. <laughs> but but Fabi so, will teach you. So, so just uh, very very briefly, it's basically about the insights model. Some people call it red, blue, green, yeah. yellow. It's it's about your personality, and yeah. we just call it the whale, the dolphin, the shark, and the owl. So yeah, but uh, but uh, it's important to say that I have many people very successful. There are introverts. They love to read the love numbers and they still are very successful so it's not true that in network marketing you need to be extrovert and be able to talk to everybody like you and me to to make it that's yeah, Daniel is the best example yeah like yeah. he's the most successful of yeah. all and he is an introvert <laughs> yeah total yeah. total <laughs> he, he just learned it uh, yeah, how to he, he learns like people when they meet him in real life because they only see him on stages they go like uh, is he angry at me I'm like no that's the real Daniel uh, he's not faking it on stage but on stage he wants to deliver a message that he believes in so his power comes out but otherwise yeah and it, it's his passion yes that's, yeah. uh, that's yeah. when you really it's feel the passion everything yeah. yeah I'm like this all the time instead at 2 a.m. you come to my house I'm the same like now <laughs> I can uh, yeah I can verify it. <laughs> I can confirm that's 100% true uh, you were actually called a tornado right when yes, you were uh, a child a child or Duracell or Duracell there was this advertising of this rabbit that never stopped or tornado is uh, it's because yeah let's people said that every time I enter in a room I just brought uh, a mess in a good and in a bad way sometimes but yeah tornado also I'm very messy thank god I can afford now a maid that runs after me every second and picks up my stuff uh, I'm not uh, I'm not a very tied up pers person but you know I can afford for somebody to do that for me <laughs> what what was your um, most positive experience because everybody has breakthroughs yes in, in, in their career can you remember like one or a two few? situations yeah. where you say 
That was uh, one of those? Yeah, for sure, going to Grow Pro Recruiting Mastery to Eric Worre to see, first of all, to learn finally like proper skills because I was more like, like a natural going with my own feelings and I needed to duplicate. So I needed to understand that, yeah, I'm that way, but somebody else is not. So I need to create a system for my team to be able to learn, know what to do. Uh, and also for me, it was very good to see women. In fact, that time where women with three kids, all of them had three kids and they were making seven figures a year. And I thought, well, you know, they make seven figures in the States. I can make a hundred thousand a year. Uh, and, and then two years later, I was on stage with them as one seven figure owner. And I was like, wow, that's how life can change overnight. It's crazy. And so that was a, a big breakthrough and inspiring moment. Um, and another breakthrough was going to one of our company's event. I think events for me, because I love the energy and I love the belief, was definitely yeah different. But I think I had many little breakthroughs as well. I could talk about it forever. Uh, confirmations that I was doing right. You know, my first $10,000 check was like, wow, wow, this works. This works. But even then, my dad told me, oh, let's see for how long. <laughs> Can and, you now, and now he's your biggest fan. Now, yes. Now he's always my see your driver. Parents in the <laughs> he, he, he takes care of my handbags because it's like, you, you're crazy. You buy these expensive handbags and people want to steal it from you. So he takes care of my handbags and he, he drives me around so I can be on the phone. And he can be with me not today. Yeah, things have changed. And I can invite them on holidays, beautiful holidays, to ski and the Maldives. So You've been with the, with the whole family to yes. the Maldives, right? How Maldives, many uh, we were in, oh my God, like a lot. Oh, five, six, seven, eight. By the way, you have like, a hair in your... Oh, thanks. Eyelash. 20, 20. I know you would be... Yeah, uh, I'll be very upset if upset he doesn't tell me. If you I see made that, my you know? hair and makeup for this today. Excuse <laughs> me, check me out. <laughs> now, I know most of the people will just hear us anyway. No, I did, uh, I think we were like 20, my brother and Daniel's family. And then we also took them to the ski holiday, to this mm -hmm. beautiful place. So yeah, again, like you What's said, that, uh, memory. Uh, Stangelberg? Stangelberg, yes. In so uh, Austria, right? Yes, yeah. yes, beautiful place. Actually, one, one Christmas we spent it with the royal family from Monte Carlo. So it was very incredible. Again, network marketing craziness hmm. broke eight years ago not having money to go to the supermarket and few years later six years later i was spending christmas with royalty or my kids go to school with the royal family of dubai it's hmm. crazy one thing what always opens my mind specifically here in dubai when you go to the first class launch or, the, or only the business class launch at yeah. emirates so for those who never flew emirates i mean that's the number one airline go. in the world we don't get commission <laughs> for that but again we are networkers we're going to share with you to me, is the best. The First best. time in my life, I like flying. Me like, too. I, I always hated flying. Do you know what I just Emirates did? Is... Do you want to know something crazy? You know, I had to go to Orlando for the expo, right? Mm -hmm. So, a 16-hour flight. But then I had to go to Italy. And instead of, and, but to fly from America to Italy, you had to fly another airline. I prefer to fly 16 hours Emirates, go back to Dubai, and even change clothes. But I could have made it work. Uh, then to fly eight hours, so I doubled my time for how much I love it. I can, you know, I relax, I sleep, I watch my movies, and and you know, you have your own bedroom, and and oh my goodness, I like it so much. So and, much. and even economy. I, yeah. I mean, if you if you compare economy yeah. from Emirates to it's any other airline, in other airlines. Yeah. So what what always amazes me is um, when you when you're in the business launch, and there are like hundreds of people. Yeah. I mean, the business launch in, in Emirates is like a whole store, uh, how we call it, a whole level of the airport. Yeah. So you can basically walk for 20, 30 minutes and you're still in yes. it. And you look around and you say, man, there's so many successful people. How can everybody fly business? Yeah. And it, it kind of shows and you. And it's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. Yeah. And yeah, then you go first class. Oh, my uh, goodness. That costs like a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, that thing is packed. Yes. You know? Oh, yeah. So and always, yeah. especially flights like LA, Dubai. It's full of superstars, actors. I flew with so many famous people as well. It really uh, opens opens your mind if you surround yourself or if you're surrounded by successful people. Yeah. If you enter a different environment, and I think that also is 
something what what helps us a lot in network marketing because naturally you just meet more successful people. Yes. And then you you have access to that million dollar earner and yeah. you're like, man, it's a normal person. Yes. And I think also uh, living in Dubai as uh, talking about Emirates, I always think about the city as well, Dubai. And, you know, it just makes your vision go so much bigger uh, because you are surrounded by these buildings, the highest towers and the most beautiful restaurants. And and so you your mind just thinks bigger. Now, remember you coming to Dubai telling me, oh, I'm super happy where I am today. Uh, I don't remember how much money you were making. You were making a lot of money already, but like, uh, I'm fine. And then after a few months, it was like, mm, I think I need to get to the next level now. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Yeah. Dubai is expensive. It's tax free, but it's not fee free. No. It's exactly. uh, definitely expensive. Sp- specifically with all the travel you do as a networker. Yes. And, uh, Emirates is amazing, but, but it costs money. Yes, oh, yes. So. and hotels, and but now with this new COVID wave, I have to say yes. I I, I finished now one tour of one month it was very long, but I I'm gonna travel only next year. We're gonna go to Hawaii. True. Yeah. Yeah. So and um, COVID that was the last topic uh, we wanted to yeah uh, wanted to talk about uh, as promised before. COVID has changed so much in our business. Like the first time ever, I feel like I have a home business. We always said, Mm -hmm. you want a business from home, do network marketing, but we were never home. Yes. (laughs) Day and night out. uh, We are talking to people now. uh, I mean, look at this beautiful studio you you created here because you now work so much more from home. Before in Germany, you would have not done this. You were always going from city to city to city. He wasn't even thinking to get like a truck and and with a (laughs) room and go, do you remember? Yeah, like a driving home. Like a driving home because he was traveling a lot so much yeah today i have to say i love it because i can be on the same day in five different continents and uh, i can talk english and be translated in eight different languages uh, we can do huge events we can have great speakers and and uh, even though i still would love one day to be able to do the big expos again with 20,000 people and I know that they will come uh, right now I'm really enjoying this being able I, I feel I am more um, not prof- profitable but I am more like my time has more worth now it's more efficient if it, Efficient, yeah. thank you. I am much more efficient with working from home. Yeah, like I can show you my agenda. Like now, soon, I start at 7, I think, but I finish at 1 a.m. If I look at my agenda, every half an hour or every hour, I have calls, calls, mm-hmm. calls, calls. And one is Lebanon, one is America, one is Italy, one is Portugal, one is Italy again. And some are Facebook Lives, Some one is an interview again, one Lebanon is a Zoom. Like, isn't it crazy how how you can do that. And look, I'm in Lebanon and in America and I'm in Italy twice. Awesome. And uh, do you still use a calendar? Like people can book you or? Uh, right now, not uh, because I was in a tour, so mm-hmm. I blocked it. And now I have to see because I know that in the moment I open it again, it's less. <laughs> no worries. We will not uh, name it here. Yeah, no, don't <laughs> name my calendar. Because uh, you know what happens when you get so successful in network marketing? You get people from other companies always wanting to to be coached by you. Uh, I have people offering me like $10,000 one hour. Like, look, I'm not a professional. Co- like, uh, don't, don't listen to my YouTube channel, listen to this podcast, but don't, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, I have so much work with, with my team right now that I, yeah, no, no calendar open for everybody. <laughs> And specifically, as you just said, um, there's like so much information out there where you can yeah. grab everything you need. Of yes. course, having a coach is always different. Having yes. a coach makes a lot of sense because it's personalized. But I, I, you know, I can hardly make it to coach all my directs uh, that are working and are qualified to be coached by me. How can I coach other people? Mm. So. That's why also, um, like, I, I put that course together. Yeah, um, I don't know if, it, if I told yes. you about like full time network marketer. And uh, there was the whole idea, like for those people who don't have a coach, but instead yeah. of booking someone, paying one-on-one, which yeah. is a fortune, just having one source to, to get all the yeah. information. And you're so good because you you explain it uh, very well, but also in a simple way so that people can understand it. It's oh. very nice. And uh, I just launched an ebook actually, uh, Handling Objections, oh. How to Handle Any Objections in Network Marketing. Well done. Like the 15 I most uh, common objections. Awesome. So um, everybody can get it, by the way. Uh, just check out fulltimenetworkmarketer.com slash free dash ebook. Awesome. Okay. I'll get it so, too. And um, yeah, so just to wrap it up, um, one question before I give you the final word. Yeah. Where can people find you? 
uh, especially Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram, <laughs> Stefania name. Lugato. Yeah, with my name. And uh, I hardly use Facebook. I know I should use it more, but I don't like it so much. Um, that's it. Right now, I Or they just Google your name. Yeah, they just Google my name. There are great name. interviews out there. And yeah, uh, yeah. On YouTube, you can watch some of my trainings are also in English. I have a lot of Italian on YouTube, but also in English. But uh, but I have to say, right now, I'm working so... Like, I'm recruiting three to five people a week on Instagram. And uh, uh, because people are spending so much time there. Mm -hmm. so. so if somebody wants to reach out, yeah. then uh, Instagram is the best way. Yes, for me, yes. And it's me answering, believe it or not. I, I'm multitasking. Yeah, I always see you uh, working with your fingers on the screen. Yes. 24-7. Yes. yes. So, yeah, to wrap it up, uh, the final word, as always, belongs to the guest. Yes, so I want to tell to the person that maybe is struggling right now in network marketing, look, what doesn't happen sometimes in two or three or four years can happen in two or three months. But what you need to understand is just showing up is not enough. You need to take action, you need to pay a price, and you need to work harder than anyone around you you know people think people think it's simple yes it's simple but it's hard especially to start so i just want to say to the people take the action take that extra extra mile work harder than anybody and their results will come uh, because network marketing works it's simple it works it's the future it's the business of 21st century and more uh, you just have to choose a good company solid company uh, i prefer product based but again i don't want to you know I'd say that everything else is not good but something that you love because I love the product so you have to share what you love and go for it and change your life it works I'm living proof you are living proof Fabi so it's amazing thanks for being here mm -hmm. thanks for uh, Thank telling you. your story and uh, now let's do something cool and go to the beach yes <laughs> <laughs> bye right. guys bye 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 thank you so much for tuning in I hope you got great value from today's video if you want to become a full-time network marketer yourself, check out the link to my free courses in the description below. And if you're interested in more content about the industry or amazing interviews with million-dollar earners, check out this video or this one. See you soon.